Hey, I think I did it again. Hello there. Hey, I've been thinking a lot about um, things to do at your home business to make your life a lot easier and make your business work even better. And um, one of the things I keep hearing about is outsourcing. And so, you know, we outsource without even thinking about it. If we have someone babysitting our children, we're really outsourcing. If we have someone come in and do our lawn, that those are all outsourcing things. So it's, you know, having somebody do something that, that we don't want to do ourselves. And in our business, this can mean having someone do for us what we maybe aren't as good at even. So um, some ideas of outsourcing could be um, your SEO. You might know somebody, maybe you're not as good at search engine optimization, but you know someone who who is or you want to go ahead and put it out there to find somebody who is and you may have tons and tons of um, different uh, people apply even on Craigslist because people are looking for work and there are people that are skilled at some of these things and and they can work from their home just as easy and get you the information you need you, you can have people doing content for you you can have people doing web design for you you can have people doing your bookkeeping and, and um, even doing your mail collection. So um, just you know, think about the things that, that you would like to leave aside or things that you maybe aren't as good at. So you can focus on the things that you really do enjoy. And um, now if that means personal too, um, today I was listening to a gal and you know, most of us don't like to do dishes or house cleaning. But if we could take that time and, and pay someone else, maybe $100 a week for four or five hours that somebody comes in and cleans, what would that mean to us? And how much can we get done in those four to five hours? What's our time worth? So number one, I would say to you know really sit down and decide what your time is worth and understand that if, you're, if you have outsourcing going on, your business will grow even faster. And if you're um, willing to budget in and have someone, maybe they're doing content for you, for your, for your um, website, um, they don't have to be here. They can be all over. You know, Dell Computers has done that. They had uh, office buildings, you know, all over. And they r realized that they could send their employees to work from home Therefore, you know, they were happier, the employees were a lot happier, and there's no overhead for buildings or anything like that, and they're paying them on a production. Now, you know, what are you producing? We'll pay for what you produce. And this is what you can do with outsourcing, too. You've got someone doing SEO, maybe someone doing backlinks, maybe someone doing content, and you can pay them per what they produce, which can save you money, which can help, you know, benefit them, too. And I think that's the way the world is really going. I think that's what we're looking at in the future for businesses. Is um, This is all available to do online. Um, we don't have to have everybody in one office in one area. My friend uh, LT, Lawrence Tam, has people. I think he even has someone. Here we are. I'm close to Seattle. He has a, uh, a content, uh, actually copyright, uh, in Seattle. He's got someone in Florida. I th he has someone in Australia, I believe. But you can outsource. And someone in India you can outsource these people and they do fantastic work and it's on a production level so they may only take a certain amount of time but you can set an um, amount of time to pay them. Um, communication is, imp is important when you do have outsourcing. Make sure you're communicating with them maybe right up front to let them know you know how do you how do you want to communicate. You can have some people that want to communicate um, just Skype or Hangout and then you have others that do don't really want to go that route. They'd rather talk on the phone or they'd rather just email or text you. So pick like two uh, methods that you prefer and then work with them on that because you definitely don't want to have, you know, outsourcing. You've got help, um, employees or, or people helping you out in your business and, and you've got five or six ways to communicate with them. That could get pretty crazy and overwhelming. So if you pick a couple of those and like maybe a Skype and an and a email or something or text, uh, then you're set. You've got a couple modes and you can usually work you know you can stay in that in that realm and make that work <laughs> so um, think of other things too you know like um, a friend uh, loves to walk her dog but she also works long hours she has her own real estate and so what she will do is she has someone come in each day and just play with her dog you know because her dog is family to her so what's important to you and what um, is something that you would rather not have to deal with or something that you would like to not stress over when you're away that you can have someone do for you too so that you can concentrate on what you do best and concentrate on what you love and get it done 
And so also that means when you're outsourcing that when you're out um, maybe taking a hike or you're with family or friends enjoying an activity, that's, that stuff's still working in your business. Stuff is still moving along. And that's always a good feeling. <laughs> that stuff's still moving and things are still getting done. So I hope that's helped you today and that you can apply some of these ideas and think outside the box, really. Totally think outside the box. You just never know... Um, what somebody, you know, that there are people out there that really want to do things and that there's things that you can probably find people to do. <laughs> and so we'll talk to you again another day. We'll see you.